Frederick Valentish was an Australian pilot who disappeared while on a 125 nautical mile training flight over Bass Strait. He had about 150 total hours flying time and held a class 4 instrument rating, which authorized him to fly at night. He was studying part-time to become a commercial pilot, but had a poor achievement record, having twice failed all five commercial license exam subjects. As recently as the month before his disappearance, he failed three more commercial license subjects. He had also been involved in flying incidents. For example, he strayed into a controlled zone in Sydney, for which he received a warning, and twice he flew into a cloud on purpose, for which prosecution was being considered. According to his father, Valentish believed in UFOs, and he was worried about being attacked by them. The destination of Valentish's final flight was King Island, but his motivation for the flight remains unknown. He told flight officials that he was going to King Island to pick up some friends, while he told others that he was going to pick up crayfish. Valentish also failed to inform King Island Airport of his intention to land there. Valentish disappeared on the evening of October 21st, 1978. He radioed Melbourne Flight Service at 7.06 p.m. to report that an unidentified aircraft was following him. He was told there was no known traffic at that level. Valentish said he could see a large, unknown aircraft, which appeared to be illuminated by four bright landing lights. He was unable to confirm its type, but said it moved at high speed. Valentish then reported that the aircraft was approaching him from the east, and said the other pilot might have been purposely toying with him. He then said the aircraft was orbiting above him, and that it had a shiny metal surface with a green light on it. Valentish then reported that he was experiencing engine troubles. When asked to identify the aircraft, Valentish replied, It's not an aircraft. His transmission was then interrupted by unidentified noise described as metallic scraping sounds. Then, all contact was lost. A sea and air search was undertaken. The search encompassed over 1,000 square miles. Search efforts were in vain. An investigation into Valentish's disappearance by the Australian Department of Transport was unable to determine the cause, but it was presumed fatal for Valentish. Five years after Valentish's aircraft went missing, an engine cow flap was found washed ashore on Flinders Island. The part had been identified as having come from the same type of aircraft that Valentish flew. It has been theorized that Valentish staged his own disappearance. Melbourne police received reports of a light aircraft making a mysterious landing not far from Cape Otway at the same time as Valentish's disappearance. Another theory proposed that Valentish became disoriented and was flying upside down. If this were the case, the lights he thought he saw would be his own aircraft's lights reflected in the water. He would then have crashed into the water. However, the aircraft he was piloting could not have flown inverted for long, meaning that its engine would have cut out very quickly. UFO experts have speculated that a UFO either destroyed Valentish's aircraft or abducted him. Photos taken by plumber Ray Manifold on the day of Valentish's disappearance show a fast-moving object exiting the water near Cape Otway Lighthouse. However, the pictures were not clear enough to identify the object. On August 8th, 2013, Brandon Lawson arrived at his home in San Angelo, Texas, 
where he lived with his girlfriend of 10 years. Between 10.45 and 11 p.m., Lawson and his girlfriend argued. Lawson had not returned home the night before. His girlfriend believed that Lawson was on drugs at that time. Lawson had ongoing issues with substance abuse, but had been clean for about six months. Lawson's brother, Kyle, later claimed that Brandon took meth shortly before his disappearance. Around 11.30 p.m., Brandon Lawson called his father in Crowley, Texas, about a three-hour drive from San Angelo, and told him he was coming to his house. At 11.54 p.m., Lawson left his house to go to his father's house, driving his silver Ford F-150. At about 12.30 a.m. on August 9th, Lawson called his brother Kyle and told him he had run out of gas and was pulled over on U.S. Route 277 between San Angelo and Bronte. Kyle claimed that during the call, Lawson told him that three are chasing me out of town and later clarified it was the Mexicans in the neighborhood. Kyle asked if he was hallucinating, which Lawson denied. Kyle, with his wife and four-year-old child, drove to Lawson's girlfriend's house to retrieve a fuel container. Kyle said they continued to make calls to each other, but Lawson would not hold a conversation with him, usually ending the call after a few sentences. At 12.50 a.m., Lawson called 911, which rang at a local nursing home in Robert Lee, Texas. He told the responder that he had run out of gas and that he needed the police. During the call, Lawson made several confused statements, including, Yes, I'm in the middle of a field, pulled some guys over, right here going toward Abilene, on both sides. My truck ran out of gas. There's one car here. This guy's chasing to the woods. Please hurry. At 12.56 a.m., a trucker called 911 to report Lawson's truck, which was parked in a hazardous manner on the road. Between 12.50 a.m. and 1.15 a.m., Lawson received and made several calls with his brother, his girlfriend, his neighbor, and the 911 dispatcher. His poor cell phone reception caused several of these calls to go straight to voicemail. After 1.19 a.m., all calls to his phone went straight to voicemail. At around 1.18 a.m., Kyle called Lawson, who sounded out of breath and claimed he was bleeding. Shortly after 1 a.m., a sheriff's deputy arrived at Lawson's truck. Lawson was not there. Kyle arrived at the truck around 1.10 a.m. At the time, he was on the phone with Lawson, who told him, I can see you. I'm right here. But neither the deputy nor Kyle could see him. At the time of the disappearance, Lawson had an active arrest warrant on him. His brother thought that he may have been hiding from the deputy. In the aftermath of his disappearance, a search party spent several hours investigating the area near Lawson's truck. They found no signs of Lawson. Another search party located clothing identified as Lawson's near his last known location. The Texas Rangers then conducted a search of the area and found human remains. As of this recording, DNA results are not complete, but the remains are expected to belong to Lawson. Maureen Kelly disappeared at the age of 19 on the evening of June 9th, 2013. She was last seen at the Canyon Creek Campground, located in Gifford Pinchot National Forest in Skamania County, Washington. According to a group of friends who were at the campground with Kelly, she stated that she was going on a spiritual quest before removing her clothes and walking into the woods wearing only a fanny pack containing knives, matches, and a compass. She has not been seen or heard from since. An extensive search for Kelly proved unsuccessful. Authorities were able to determine that she had crossed Canyon Creek and headed north toward Forest Service 54. They discovered bare footprints that appeared to match the size of Kelly's feet. 
Canine units were also brought in to help locate Kelly. Authorities do not suspect foul play in Kelly's disappearance. Due to the low temperatures in the area on the night of her disappearance, along with the fact that she had not been wearing any clothes, it's believed that Kelly likely succumbed to hypothermia. However, her body was never located. Her case remains unsolved. <laughs>